Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I want to talk about Dish Network. So um, a viewer asked me to cover it. So uh, Mac Attack uh, 4495, shout out to you. Um, now, I, I want to preface this by saying I am probably not going to get into this stock. I think it's very compelling. And, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. So whatever I say here is um, not saying that you should buy. I'm personally not going to buy it. But I still think it's very interesting. And I, I want to look more into this stock as well. So um, Dish Network recently had pretty bad earnings and you can see that the uh, there was a lot of selling um, for the stock. And, you know, just looking technically right now, sure, the one day looks like it is um, on the way up, but the MACD sort of shows that there isn't necessarily a lot of volume in the stock. So there isn't really a lot of um, uh, interest in the stock, right? So the reason for that is because um, Dish Network recently went uh, unprofitable. So it, it went from being a pretty profitable company, um, but you can see that the stock price um, wasn't really appreciating, even though they were a profitable con company. And then they went unprofitable. So that really just signaled that, uh, you know, to a lot of in investors to sell off the stock. So that's what really happened. You can see that um, their revenue is on the steady decline. Their debt is increasing substantially and their operating expenses is also extending um, substantially. I think most of this is because they are actually trying to expand into the Mexican market. Um, so that's what caused the operating expenses to increase. You can see that their cash flows um, is way down and they are doing, I think some, some acquisitions, they are trying to get more into the 5G space which is a heavily, heavily competitive market, which requires a lot of capital that um, they're going to have to find somewhere. Um, they have already tried it with debt. I think the next thing they're going to do is try to um, issue out more shares. So that will push down the stock price even more. So, you know, um, I, I, I don't like that. Uh, they, they might have to raise more cash, um, even though they... Uh, have already, uh, they already have so much debt, right? So that's a that's a bad thing for me. But let's look at the uh, other stuff here. Um, once again, technicals. Go back to the technicals. One week chart, uh, RSI on the upside, and MACD is also curling towards the upside. But once again, this has never really worked for Dish Network, so I wouldn't expect it to suddenly explode up, right? Um. It's just something that never happened in the past. So I, I wouldn't expect Dish to um, suddenly have a short squeeze. Now let's talk about short squeezes. Um, the last time we had a short squeeze, what really happened? Um, we had GME, we had AMC. Um, it ended up being that uh, there was no liquidity in the stock when the stock actually hit all time highs, right? Um, and when that happens, the market um, halts the stock. So people blame Robin Hood a lot. People blame a lot of brokers for um, taking away the sell button. But that is not really the broker's fault. It's the fault of uh, the market or rather it's the function of the market that they stop trading when there is no liquidity in the stock. When nobody wants to buy the stock, you cannot sell, right? So it, it just works that way. So if, if sort of um, Dish Networks gets a short squeeze, the chances that you will um, be able to sell at the top is very, very low. So I would say you probably don't really want a short squeeze. Um, and yeah, so it, the chances are you will probably lose money if there really is a short squeeze. Um, so yeah, I covered this. Um, so next up, we have massive insider selling. And I'm going to say that in quotes because the only person who is buying is James DeFranco. And who is James DeFranco? He is basically the uh, vice president of Dish. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, he's also on the board, so it would make sense that he would buy. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. It's just one person. It seems like the rest of the insiders are not necessarily interested in buying the stock. Um, I think we have seen the same thing with a lot of other um, television networks as well. We have seen uh, Viacom networks, although Viacom was because uh, one of the massive uh, uh, in, sorry investors got uh, went to bankrupt. I think it was James Huang uh, or James Wong. Or, uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but um, when that happened, when the uh, insider or rather when the investors 
lost a lot of money. Um, they they sold out the position. So I, I'm not sure. I don't think James Franco is going to sell out. He's definitely um not probably not going to sell out. I mean, he he bought five point five uh million shares, so he's not going to sell. Um, the same thing's not going to happen with Dish. But uh, I think what will happen is that they're going to start to issue out more shares just to cover their expenses because um, they are not profitable right now and they do not have cash. So um, that is just uh, one thing that is a downside for the stock, right? So um, I, I think the only um, reason I would probably get back into Dish is that they can prove that they can become profitable again and then that uh, profitability stays. So yeah, I, I'm still probably going to wait on Dish. And the next thing is that we have um, over here on QuiverQuant. Um, you'll notice I, I use a lot of websites. Um, that's just sort of my style of researching. Um, and yeah, um, once again, insider trading, a lot of shares. But mind you, this is just one person. Um, we got a Congress sale here, not that big. So not that uh, important there. Um, so, so Dish, yeah, um, not, not doing too well on the Twitter followers there. And we have sort of CNBC recommendations. We have uh, John Najarian. Uh, buy in 2021 and yeah the stock did not do very well so you know tells you a lot about the cnbc guys um not not shitting on them I, i'm just saying that they can be wrong as well um and then a lot of like bearish trades i don't know what this is but i will assume um uh, it's gonna be a sell because the stock is just heading downwards so those are reasons why i think i will probably not get into the stock it, it seems very very um it seems like it's on the decline right so i don't necessarily want to get into a stock on the decline i, I want to find stocks that are actually growing and also moving into profitability not stocks that are moving out of profitability right um and then we have the shares short here is about 30 percent, which i think is actually pretty normal to have shares short um up to 30 percent. i know it's pretty high but I, I think there is a lot of problems with this company and I know it kind of sucks because um, I actually feel bad for James DeFranco. He he seems to be very confident in the stock. That's why he's buying the stock, right? He's trying to fund the stock with his own money. Um, but you have people short, uh, sort of shorting the stock here. And yeah, that sucks on, on a moral basis, but um, that's just how money is made, I guess. Um, so 15% by insiders and 84% by institutions, which is actually pretty high. Uh, we don't see a lot of retail interest in this stock. So once again, I, I would I would probably stay out of it. So their holders are Dodge and Cox. Um, actually, I don't know what this is. Um, BlackRock and Vanguard, obviously, um, they hold actually quite a lot of shares, 20%. Uh, and you've got a couple of uh, other shareholders as well, pretty small positions. Um, I, I would say... You know, a, a lot of people are saying this is a penny stock, but once again, they do have a market cap of uh two billion, so that's actually not market uh sorry, not um penny stock territory. So they're not really a penny stock, it's just that the share price is low. They could do a reverse split, uh, although I, I don't see any reasons to, um, other than the fact that it might help them stay in the market because we, we've seen uh, plenty of times when the stocks dip below um sort of one dollar the, they'll they'll do a reverse split so the, the market doesn't kick them out right so let's talk about valuation for a minute so dish has a pe of about 2.06 and that means we will probably get our return back in two years if dish continues to do what it does and actually grows but the problem is that institutions or rather uh, people are expecting the stock to actually stop growing by about 10 times and we see the same thing with their price to sales and price to book they are valued about 10 times below um, what they're supposed to be because you know price to book typically you would want it at about one and they are valued at 0 0.1 so that means a lot of investors are expecting them to uh you know drop uh s slow down in growth by 10 percent. so that is a very very bad thing for dish um and you can see that's over here on the uh, simply wall street page they are undervalued by 78 percent. i think this is um gonna be pretty wrong and i think it's gonna be a lesson on why you probably shouldn't 
invest based on ratios um you, you you have to look at other things as well you can see that on their price to earnings towards their ratio and peers they are expected to um, not grow as much um, so the reason that PE is low they are undervalued is because uh, investors are not expecting them to grow which means they don't buy the stock which means the PE is low it's not uh, the other way around I think some people um, think it's the other way around um, and you can see that there are four PE um, Dish Networks is actually twice um, their peer so Dish is currently sitting at 20 it's not showing here but they are expected to slow down in growth about 10 times so that is not necessarily a very very good thing and the next thing i want to go through is their website itself i think this is a very important part of uh, my process is just to understand the companies um, uh, what they're doing right so um, what does dish sell dish sells basically a, a cable box you can see that um, they actually have pretty good channels they got espn they got disney channel um, and they got Paramount. Now, mind you, I haven't watched these channels in like 10 years and I, I've only been alive for 22 years. Um, I, I don't know what uh, shows are on these networks and these are personally just not for me. I, I think uh, streaming, I, I watch some Amazon Prime. I think that's more for me, but I will probably not ever watch TV again. I think this is just catering to the older sets of audiences, which you know it's not that bad to cater towards the older audience they do have the money and they they will shell out for tv services but i'll just say this um this is not the future the future is probably streaming it's not going to go back to cable tv so you are investing in the past if you're investing in dish network and you know there are some people that can argue that that's a good thing right you can invest in cigarettes and still make money but um i i think once again Dish is probably on the decline, so I, I would not put money, too much money into it. And the other thing is that they are, I think, trying to focus on the Latino market, which is the uh, Mexico market. But you'll notice that on their revenue, they have been trying that for the last five, six years. And you can see that the uh, revenue is very, very uh, inconsistent and very, very low as well. You can see that the US has 16 billion dollars in um uh, revenue and mexico only had 39 uh 39 million so 16 billion and 39 million there is a very very sharp um difference in revenue here so i i think it's more important to focus on the u.s market right now for dish um but there are talks that they are trying to focus more on the mexico market which is it's not it's not great um, and they are also, once again, trying to get into the 5G market, which is extremely, extremely competitive. And also, um, it's possible that 5G might get phased out very, very soon. So huge, huge risk um, for, for Dish Network on that side, right? And once again, I want to go through what the, the customer experience is like without actually using the product. So I think Reddit, um, you know, a lot of problems with Reddit, but I think Reddit actually is uh, pretty good for that so we got a couple of issues here no subscription sh channel showing very quick fix just takes five minutes after you call customer service so that's good um they got that figured out uh next up we got you know dish on uh, reddit slash dish um and you can see that there are a lot of problems with dish networks i think there were some people saying that they're gonna cancel and all that but um once again, I, I I think that is still a huge user base. It's just that cable TV is inherently just uh, flooded with problems, uh, which I, I don't know. I, I probably do not want to uh, invest in such a company, right? So once again, I, I don't like to say bad stuff, but um, it, it just doesn't seem compelling. Next up, we got the Google Trends, and you can see over the last five years, it's been declining right so once again you are investing in the past in this case um, a lot of searches from us a lot of searches from puerto rico um, pakistan as well that's actually pretty odd um, and yeah i, I mean it, it's not a lot of um, interest it's actually going down you can see that once i compare it to other streaming services as well uh, i know it's not it's not one-to-one -one, 
first off, um, streaming services, it, you're more likely to search on it. So this is biased towards streaming services. And also um, Dish Network is a satellite TV uh, company. So it's, it's very, very different business models. But I'm just trying to compare the interest here um, online. And you can see that Dish Network is not exactly doing very, very well. Now you can you can argue that I, I should probably compare this to other um, satellite networks, but uh, yeah, I, I'm just gonna do what I'm doing here. So yeah, um, Amazon Prime looks like it is still up, and I'm not even comparing to Netflix. If I do Netflix, um, it's just gonna wipe the 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 floor with all of these, right? So yeah, Netflix just literally dominating everything. So once again, streaming is the future. I, I think Dish is not necessarily for the future but if you're looking for that short squeeze um I, I would say it's still possible but once again no liquidity um and then the market will halt if there is no liquidity which means you cannot sell at the top so yeah um yeah i i once again i i don't like to say bad stuff um you know mac attack this is not sort of an attack on you it's just my opinion right so yeah, um, that is my video on Dish Networks. Let me know what you think about it, where you invest. I personally will not invest, but very, very compelling stock. I really liked researching this, to be honest. And, and yeah, thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe. See you in the next one.